I never had a bad Yelp review because people always enjoy it. People review you on Yelp? Well, yeah, because I have studios and stuff like that. Oh my God, I wonder if I have Yelp reviews. Hey everybody, welcome back to No More Ink, the ultimate deep dive into the contestants of Ink Master, who also happen to be some of the strongest artists in the game. Luckily for me, today I am joined by none other than Pon. So Pon, let's start all the way back at the beginning of your Ink Master journey. So what season did you compete on initially and how did it go? So I was on season 12, Battle of the Sexes. I thought I did really well until I got home and people told me how well I didn't do. So, no. It wasn't so much my tattooing, but like the persona I came off as. No, I, th I think I did really well. I was actually really proud of myself. Yeah. I had set mini goals for myself. Like I was like, just don't go home first. Then I was like, don't go home third. And then it's like, wow, I can make it to the fifth. And it, it just kept going downhill from there. And I almost made it to the end. What did you mean by, you know, when you said the persona? I'm a habitual line crosser. Like I'm from New York. I bust chops. Like, you know, I have no qualms about making fun of people. Like, but it's all in love when you have like, you know, such like a hot topic, you know, season like Battle of the Sexes, you know, obviously the other team is women, you know, so when you're making fun of women, it's like, you don't come off that great, so. But it was just not me making fun of women, it was making fun of the other team. Yes, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. No, I get it. I mean, my husband Arlo says that I have um, an East Coast personality. Yes. I mean, Some people in Colorado now have a hard time understanding my sarcasm because of the East Coast personality. Apparently we have that yes, here. I, oh, I have it, trust me. Oh, I know you and, have and it. The and the internet let me know. I personally, <laughs> I, I, well, well, the internet's a strange place. Yes. The, the internet's like the Amazon these days. So I'm assuming when you got that call to come back, instant? Instant, I had to pretend like, to who? To, to yourself? My wife, to my wife. Oh, to like, your wife. Like, hon, I don't know. Oh, oh, should I do it again? Like, you know, it's very selfish to like for me to just say yes. My wife is my rock. Like, she, you know, filming takes God knows how long, and like she has to support the family. There's no income coming in, you know. So there's a lot of variables. So I did have to think about it, but in my head it was yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I didn't have to finish the yes. question. I knew. <laughs> if you want to finish it for continuity, you could. Yeah. But <laughs> so after. The instant yes, and how did you prepare? You know, I'm one of those guys, I can't study. I'm just like, I'll get there, I'll figure it out. There was a couple things I worked on, but it was just more like, we'll figure it out when I get yeah, there. If it's yeah. meant to be, it's meant to be. Like, what more can I do? I'm, I've been tattooing 22 years, like, I can't reinvent myself. Like, you know, you saw it, like, I struggled a bunch with, like, trying to, like, on this season, I struggled a bunch with, like, using the black. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you love black? I love black, you know? And it was like, my biggest thing was, like, if I'm gonna go down as myself, I'm happy. I will say that mashup day, in one tattoo, you showed us a glimpse into two completely different sides of yourself, though. And I almost don't believe you that you don't do black and gray realism, because that was a really good little piece of that house there. I was classically trained in art. I choose to do traditional, but like I'm covered like in new school. I love you. When I illustrate, like I worked for a toy company, mm -hmm. I illustrate, everything I illustrate is always new school or yeah. illustrative. Yeah. But I choose to do t traditional, because that's my passion. So let's talk about our favorite challenge this round. I had so much fun doing like a lot of them. Like I like you saw me like laughing half the time. Like uh, the the pinup challenge was so much fun. Stop. How about the, the banana hammock? The banana hammock <laughs> killed I, me. I loved some of the, the the concepts I got to do. Like the flash challenges this season were off the hook. Like they were all great. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of f fun. The flash challenges were fun because there's like no consequence, really. I was actually jealous that I didn't get to do most of those flash challenges. The fire, the, the fire exploding, the fire that was one? so amazing. It yeah. was dope. The, some of the tattoo challenges, like I think the banana hammock and the, the cow were like... Oh, they were ridiculous. They, I, <laughs> they were so silly. I also loved the pug. I'm actually happy because like, here's the thing, like the tattoo that sent me to do the pug, yeah. I ain't mad at. Like yeah. that, that tattoo was beautiful. I think you know, that what got me was the technicality of American traditional versus traditional. Yeah. And like what I did, cause that, I'm not to toot my own horn, like that tattoo I like looked over in my head in a million times, I was like, it was perfect. Like, like as far as like, like application and stuff like that. So I'm happy with that tattoo. And that was, uh, that was the tattoo I do at home. Right. You know, like, but I missed, I missed the challenge with like doing American traditional. Yeah. I was actually happy for the opportunity to freehand that other pug because I don't think anyone expected that from me because that was like a whole new school pug. Like, yeah, and it's a different sort of skill set. Freehanding in general is hard to do. And man, we were thrilled to see what <laughs> you did. So, Pon, when you came back in and you started this season, I know when you said you competed originally on your first season, you were like, 
just don't let me yeah. be number one. Don't let me be number three. Don't let me be number. You know, how did you feel coming into this season? Did you did you think exactly you'd make it way. the same way? I was just don't let me go home first. Don't let me go home third. I was like, I just wanted to make it more than half. And it's kind of like weird this season because like I don't know where I stand. Yeah. Like I made it more than half the episodes, six out of ten. But like when you bring back the returning masters, like it like bumps my like record a little bit. Like you know, like it was like top five. No, you're like you know, like so. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm content. Like you know, like I showed really good tattoos. I'm happy. You obviously got to showcase a ton of tattoos this season that were just absolutely absurd. Absolutely <laughs> fun and ridiculous. It, it, it was seriously um, the energy that came out of the tattoos was it was contagious. Like it would fill up the room and, and you'd make everybody laugh. What do you think draws you to these tattoos, or do you think they get somehow drawn to you? I think they get drawn to me because like when I draw tattoos, like I'm more of a pop culture guy. Yeah. So that was the hardest part about being on the season. Like is like I draw pop culture. I like a lot of my inspiration comes from like. TV or cartoons, like yeah. I'm a big, you know, like cartoon person. Movies and comics. Yeah, it's like, and, and I stuff. love your your hands are kind of tied with that stuff. So like you have to come up with all these concepts on your own, and we all know like these some of these canvases, like what the f do you think? What, what were you? What, what is that? Like you know? But then when like you think about it, it's like oh that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah. They found me all of them. No, I I, I believe it, but <laughs> I'm also a believer in the, the fact that like you attract the energy that you project, yes. right? And so it's it's like manifestation, right? Like you put it out there into the world and then it comes to you. Because I truly think it was an act of God that you got the the banana hammock guy yes, yeah. <laughs> and the cow pinup. Can you imagine if anyone else got those challenges? You know what's so funny is like when you watch, like when you hear the challenges and then like you see how like one of your competitors ex you, you're like, damn, I would never have thought of that. Yeah. Like, and like, even when you're watching it at home, like, how do they figure this out? Like, that's us on the judging yeah, panel every week watching you guys work. You know, when they're saying their things up there, and I'm like, okay, I could do this, this. Like, I'm always, I'm always planning for each one because I'm planning for the worst, hoping for the best. I am so happy things worked out the way that they did, and in, in, in that sort of case, are you happy with all of the decisions that you made in regards to your alliances, how you played the game? Or is it more of that regret not listening to that gut instinct? Um, I'm such a, like a strong personality. Like when I'm amongst my friends or my peers, like I like re regress and like I start like caring way too much about what people think. Or like I was trying to tone back my personality so much because like I didn't want to come off the same way again. But it's just so hard. But, like if someone's stupid, you're stupid. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna. And I, I had such a hard time sugarcoating it. But like my hardest part was like trusting my gut. Yeah. Like I said, Gian was that little devil on my shoulder and like he's my one of my close friends but like just, like damn shut up for 2 seconds let me think <laughs> speaking of Gian when we got to my favorite challenge I, I think of the competition the black and gray bugs on the throat probably your least favorite challenge look at the polarization here huh the yin and the <laughs> I know that you originally you initially wanted the dragonfly yeah um, and that's it's literally I kick myself because I should have like it like manifested the same way like that's exactly to the T what happened my first season like I wanted something and I let a friend who I thought had my good intentions and I, I truly believe that he had my good intentions the one thing that I was disappointed with Gian if I have to like be honest is uh I don't think he like he always would talk like how much he respected me like and he looked up to me in the beginning of his career but I don't think he understood my actual capabilities because he would always be like, just do a traditional, bro. I'm like, bro, I'm so much more than traditional. Like, I wanted to do that dragonfly, and like, I let him talk me into the other thing, and I was yeah. like, it was my own fault. Like, I made the decision. I don't blame anyone for my decisions. Yeah. It sucks when that happens. I've done that so many times. And it wasn't the application that made me struggle, it was my own brain. Like, I couldn't just think a certain way. Yeah. My hands couldn't do what my brain was trying to tell it to do. It wasn't linking up. It was frustrating for me in, in my position watching you struggle through that just because I've done so many death moths. I've done, I do insects all of the time. The death moth is one of the hardest, most time consuming, intricate options up there, if not the most. I will say this, that if I would have listened to Gian, I think it wouldn't have been an issue because like the hardest part was like trying to think of what you guys were saying and then it was frustrating to see people who didn't do the challenge like I always listen way too much to the challenge right. 
Except for on the alien tattoo, I just didn't care about that. I know you didn't. Just You're like, you know what, I'm just doing an alien tattoo. I'm just, I'm just doing a good tattoo. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed most of the tattoos you did this entire season. Through all of that, that crazy uh, challenge, the black and gray insects on the throat, the, the death of the death moth, were you surprised that it was just you and Katie in the bottom? You want me to tell you the truth? Like, I was, I was pissed off. Okay. I knew I couldn't fight my way against Katie. In fact, I thoroughly enjoyed her tattoo. Yeah. I was pissed off because I know I could have sent Jason home. Jason's tattoo was ugly as <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> anyone says. I know you guys gave him leeway because it was the hardest canvas, but if I could say my argument now to you because- Yes, yeah, please. Because you guys complimented him for um, making the neck look nice or whatever, but that was with that shirt off. That guy puts on a t-shirt and that's the stupidest tattoo in the world because it literally was, the head was up here, it was some stupid hands that go around the guy's neck and everything else was below the shirt. If that guy puts on a shirt, he has a rib cage on his throat and it looks even stupider. I don't care, I really honestly, I was prepared to destroy that tattoo and I think I could have saved myself, but like, I know, you got, I know why you guys gave him the leeway. <sighs> Pawn, I wish you would have spoken your mind. Me too, but I, I, I was ready to fight at the bottom. Yeah. And then when they didn't bring him to the bottom, I was like, oh, well, I'm yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going home. I'm just gonna try and save myself. And I thought I, oh, I got close. Yeah. <laughs> it was tough for me, definitely, because when it came down to, you know, between you and Katie, I was looking at Katie's tattoo and I was like. Katie's tattoo was pretty. Man, it was. I'm, I'm, the boys were dissing so hard. They were fighting for me. Those are my boys. They, they were they, they fighting were. for you, absolutely. But yeah. man, it was a good tattoo. I said it from the beginning. I was like, if I'm going up against Katie, I'll just pack my stuff now. Because it was a really pretty tattoo. Yeah. But you know, you you remember me. I'm I'm a car salesman. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm always going to fight. Yeah. Well, Pon, you have to remember though, me too. Like, it's almost like, um, you know, being a wine connoisseur and you have a taste for all these wines, right? For me, this challenge was hard because I do so many of these insects on throats that I know exact, you know what I mean? That's I ain't, why listen, it was like. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. I, like when I finished that tattoo, I looked around, I was like, yeah, I'm going home. Stop. And, but then I saw Jason's like, I might have a chance. Mm -hmm. And then when Jason was there, I was like, yeah, I'm going home. I had made peace with it, like yeah. before you guys even said my name. Oh man, Pawn. Well, man, pawn. next time you compete. <laughs> Do you think there's a tattoo style that you'd be happy to just never attempt again? Black and gray bugs on the throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because when I when when I left, I, I said like the only positive thing that'll come of this, no one's gonna ask me for a death moth on the throat. Stop, <laughs> fun. No, it's fun. You know what is interesting? Like not what I won't do, but like I've been speaking to Ami, like you know, and like whenever I was able to, and like he inspired me. Like not that you don't inspire, but. Um, he inspired me. I'm like switch, trying to switch over to like Japanese and do stuff like. Good. I really enjoy it. Like, hey, I've seen some of your artwork that in the more Japanese style, and it is yeah. killer. It's just a lot to learn. It is, but you know what? It's a new adventure for you. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. I'm always trying to change. Yeah, I think I actually do have your look. Is it here? Oh, yeah. The death moth. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you should get kicked off of that. <laughs> I'm assuming if they ask you to come back round three, it's an, another instant. It's funny that you say that because like I, I was thinking about I was like, am I done? I, in my in my head I'm like, do I want to put myself? Because it is a lot of stress. Like you, luckily three years have gone by and I forgot the stress. And then once you're back in, you're like, oh what the? It's f like childbirth. But I know I'll be back. Like I, I don't think I'll be back. I know I'll be back. Get sucked back, and you'd like to believe you can say no. Yeah. But yeah. Totally. What do you hope to accomplish in, in the future and what does your biggest dream look like? I hope to like, you know, open my own shop and make a safe space for like my apprentice, my daughters to eventually learn. Because my daughter's 14 year old and she already like started doing tattoos on fake skin. Really? Um, yeah, she's amazing. For a 14 year old, she's better than my apprentice. Get out of here. Yeah, she's good. I can't and believe you say these things out loud. I don't care. <laughs> she's amazing like she draws on her she goes into school clean and comes home like like all tattooed up yeah. and like so my my dream is like like i said to break down the boys club wall as funny as that might sound to people who watched me on my first season like i genuinely am a person who cares way too much and like i really do care about people's feelings like like i said with steve like when we went at it i couldn't stand seeing like, like the puppy dog in his face like so i had to like apologize yeah. but so like my thing is like i want people to feel safe in tattooing. That's why I love this show because it does break down the veil and people can be held accountable for their stupidity. 
like that's why I said like you know I've never had a bad review because as much as I joke around and insult people like it's tactful you know what I'm saying like it's it's fun and I just want to make a place where my daughters can have like you know a safe space to do tattoos and people can have safe space to come get tattooed I love that at the at the end of this journey through all that you've been through especially the previous season you competed on when you got all the hate now you have a 14 year old daughter learning how to tattoo killing it crushing it this is going to be her industry how do you feel about her as this like baby tattooer coming in in this tattoo renaissance like skipping all those 22 years of experience that you had she's gonna learn the 22 years of experience she's gonna learn after that, it's up to her what she wants to do. You know what Amazing. I'm saying? Amazing, like, yeah. She's gonna learn how to put in a good tattoo cleanly. Like, you know, if there's one thing, I, I might not make the best designs, but I can put in a clean tattoo. Yeah, and like, I want her yeah. to be able to do that. You also make the best designs, yeah, Pawn. Get out of here. But like, my designs are still like, you know, they may be like five years ago designs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got people like Bob, who's super like, that, that's a whole nother mindset that I can't even get into. You know? I can't understand the way his brain works, but listen, it's different strokes for different folks. Everyone connects. And remember, tattoos aren't just about artwork. It's that memory, that energy, and it's you being the person that people want to connect to. You know, it's important. You can't stop your daughter from dating a guy, so like you just hope it's the best. Like, you know, I hope she doesn't do black and gray, you know, bugs and stuff Realism like that. You know, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like jewels Jewelry, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's so tacky. Like just, it's just so stick played. to Sailor Jenny. Yeah. So <laughs> you know what I mean. No, totally fun. I love it. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming and, and for having this chat. Oh, no, thank you for having me. I, I love your tattoos. I'm sorry you went home on my favorite challenge. It seems like a, a bittersweet ending, but I do love the <laughs> out of your yeah, artwork. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank yeah. You so much. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. And don't forget to keep checking out the Ink Master YouTube for everything Ink Master.